Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Startup Company. This is a, a genre, well an instance of a genre of games that I actually quite like. It's a tycoon game, but a little bit of a... I don't want to call it a micro tycoon game because that implies that it's like... Small. That's not really what I'm going for, but it's small scale. It's single screen might be a better way to describe it. You know, it's not roller coaster tycoon or railroad tycoon. It's more like game dev tycoon. In fact, that's probably the easiest touchstone to use for this. This is a Steam Early Access title developed by Holvgard Games, which as I understand it is maybe one dude and some contractors or not some contractors, which is pretty amazing. Uh, very accessible. I found, I bought it on Steam actually, this is not a review code. I bought it because it looked good, and because it was on Steam Top Sellers, and because it had very positive reviews on Steam. Spent about an hour and a half playing it so far, a lot to like. I think it's a more robust, difficult version of something like Game Dev Tycoon, minus the obvious kind of appeal that Game Dev Tycoon has because it's connected to an industry that I assume if you're watching this you have some reverence for. Still though, I think this game is more mechanically deep replayable and as a result uh, a, a much more, and I'm gonna use the word again, a much more robust experience. So I'm gonna continue for now, but this is really just to give you a feel for how um, you know the game progresses. This is maybe after like 45 minutes once I figured out what I was doing. Uh, and what this game does is essentially it takes place as with you as the manager or the CEO of a new tech startup. So what do you do as a tech startup? Well, you make products. Like, I've already made Facebook, but better. I've already made Amazon, but better. They're taking a little while to catch on. We're making 92 bucks a day on Facebook, but better, but declining because we're losing users. We're making a little 12 on Amazon, but better. So, you know, the world is passing us by a little bit here. How do we make products? How do we make money? Uh, by hiring staff, basically. Um, and we have made money. It might seem like this is bad, but I've actually made, you know, roughly $82,000 this month. And the way that we've done that is by contract work, work, which we'll see a lot of later. So don't worry about it for now. Um, but we do that by hiring employees. So I have a developer over here. I have a developer over here. I have a graphic artist over here, or at least someone who designs graphics components, um, which I believe is meant to be a graphic designer, more or less. I have an intermediate lead developer who kind of merges all the components together into systems, and I have a researcher who unlocks new things on the tech tree to make our products even better. Plus a manager who um, manages employees, essentially giving them perks, and a sales executive. The sales executive exists to uh, get new contracts for us to do, and the contracts I think are intended to get you money while you're developing your projects that, you know, those are the ones you want to make you a million dollars a day or something like that, or $500,000 a day. Um, the contracts usually pay you, at least in the early game, on the order of a few thousand to a few te tens of thousands of dollars. So, basically, it's a staff management game, but uh, I'm not going to join in here because there's actually a lot of stuff on the go. Instead, I just use this as kind of like a feel for how things go. Uh, maybe an hour into the game, and then we're gonna go back and we're actually gonna start a new game, and we'll call this, you know, uh, well, I was gonna say Blue Hole, but I don't want to get copyright infringement. Um, so, you know, we'll just call this, like, Northern Lion Industries. I think we've used that before for this, and, uh, when you start the game, there's a few things that you do, and I'm gonna play through it. Consider this almost like it's episode one of a series or something like that, even though that's not the intention. I already know I like the game. We'll describe it as we play, but mostly we're just going to play it for a half hour here, and I think what you see is what you get with respect to that. So we start with no money. We're going to take out a loan. It's $40,000. Um, the game takes place over the course of days, so the cycle is a day. Um, in a year, we have to pay back $46,793, a.k.a. about $128 bucks per day, 30% um, interest. It's expensive, but we have no money, so we'll take that. All right, so how do we get started here? Well, the game's actually pretty good about tutorialization. It doesn't send you very many emails. It's like the opposite of Kingdoms and Castles. Kingdoms and Castles pops up messages every 10 seconds that tell you things you have no interest in after the first two times you see them. These ones actually tell you um, what you should do in the game. Like, to get you started, here's a few hints. Take a loan, hire a sales executive, and you need to hire a developer as well. But anyway, not to mention these emails are actually, some of them are from the developer. I'm not assuming that he's at home typing them out and sending them to me personally, but it gives the game a nice personal touch uh, as well. So, um, I, I've done this enough in the early game that I think I've got an idea for what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start by decorating the office just ever so slightly. We'll put a desk like here. We need a desk for our developer. And we'll put a desk over here. This will be a desk for our sales associate. Then we gotta hire some people. A developer and a sales associate, ideally. So, or a sales executive, I should say. So all this stuff is just parameters. We can hire like higher tier sales executives. But we're just getting started. We don't need that. We're just gonna put out a one day job ad, essentially. 
Um, and uh, we'll, we'll speed up time a little bit here. To recruit a sales executive who will generate contracts for us and allow us to thus make money. So let's let's look. First we got... I, I don't tend to be too picky with labor in this game. So we have Essie Ray. She's a sales executive. Um, I think the star rating means she's 111% qualified for the job. I, more or less, we, you'd see if we let time go here a little bit, you'll see varying degrees of people apply with, you know, different skills matching and also different um, uh, salaries. So we could go for a, a more expensive person who's better at the job. I think that would be smart for us to do. So I'm going to hire um, SE Ray here. Oh, the work environment rating. That's what it is. Speed. Oh, it's her speed. I see, I see. How fast this employee completes tasks, 100% is considered average. Okay, so it is kind of like a work performance rating. 100% is uh, is an average rating. So we're going to put her down there. And um, she's going to search for a contract. And essentially what this is going to do is give us a work order that we can use to uh, make some money before we can really develop more robust systems to create our own products like Better Facebook, for example. So let's cancel our job search. We're also going to need a developer. I don't think we can get designers yet. Yeah. We'll get developers. Uh, again, we'll just go for one day here. And we got a lot of people applying right off the bat. Let's get someone, you know, who's good at their job. 130%, 118, 124. I mean, 118 at a much lower salary might be good. But honestly, I think we want to go for, like, the best of the best here. So I'm even going to let this go a little bit longer here. Uh, see if we can get someone, like, 135, 150, etc., etc. 144 and honestly relatively cheap. The longer the search goes on, the more likely you are, I guess, to come across um, someone like this. This seems like a great fit, so we'll hire her here. Um, Lily Ferguson, and we'll put her up right there. She requires a work environment rating of 1%. This will get more difficult as the game goes on, but essentially she, she wants to work in a nice office. Uh, this office sucks, but we're at 2%, so we've got, uh, we got the bill fit here. All right, so... We'll just play on speed one for now. We've got our first contract. This happens every two hours as long as we micromanage our sales associate and we'll respond. Okay. A new contract is available. The following contract is awaiting your acceptance. Please notice that declining a contract will generate a 30-day cooldown period for that specific company. So we have Vilio. These are all based on uh, real uh, studios or real web 2.0 stuff like you know youtube reddit etc etc you'll see as we play um we need to develop one network component which I'll, I'll show you how that works high urgency it pays 1900 bucks it's not great but it's okay for the early game and uh it's it's gonna take us six production hours so we got to do that in 24 hours we'll accept the contract now we got to work on the deliverables and the way that we do that is by first uh, our developer has a suite of skills, these first five here, UI component, backend component, network component, database component, encryption component. You might be looking at this and if you're not, you know, software engineering minded, you're like, I don't know what that is. It doesn't matter. All you need to know is the icons effectively. And then essentially these are fundamental base level primitives. When you build these, sometimes contracts just require these, but sometimes you've got to build a certain suite of these using one or more developers, then pass that up to a higher developer, and that developer will integrate those mechanics into something even better, and those contracts pay big money. But first, uh, you know, despite being amazing at her job, she doesn't know how to develop anything, so we got to spend $1,000. She'll learn how to develop wireless components, or sorry, network components, and then we'll just uh, have her go off on this like this. And once she finishes this, we can complete that contract. The contracts will get increasingly uh, difficult as the game goes on. We can also speed up the game uh, using the one, two, three keys here. We might want to uh, stop our recruitment as well, just to stop alerts from coming in. So we'll start relatively small here, but this does almost have an element of, uh, oh, she finished. It does almost have an element of like incremental games where, you know, I said this in Vostok Inc. The curve of your progress should be exponential. Like it should start pretty slow and look almost linear and then take off, I think, as you get further and further. Now, of course, you also have to manage your finances, but uh, assuming that nothing catastrophic happens, it is the kind of game where you hit these economies of scale pretty quickly. Even within the first hour, I noticed that. So we're going to deliver. That gave us uh, 1900 bucks. Everything's fine here. We don't get a pass due fee because we delivered it on time. We're going to have her search for another contract. And then this is something that's a little unintuitive, but pretty much the core of the game. Our developer should always be building something. Particularly UI components need to be built all the time. Backend components need to be built all the time. 
Encryption in database, I see a little bit less, but still common. So essentially, she should just be popping off. And I do have a criticism to some extent. I recognize that this is an abstraction of develop life or developers' lives. You can't mostly, I guess, just sit in your office and... Well, I mean, maybe I'm ignorant of this, to be honest with you, but I'm assuming you don't sit in your office and go, I'm just cranking out UI stuff, and then Google calls you, and you're like, oh, I just have the perfect thing for you right here, unless you work for, like, you know, Salesforce or something. But it's, it's an abstraction of gameplay mechanics, and I'm okay with that. What I don't like is that you have to micromanage every developer until you get a manager. This auto-repeat button, we can't click click until we have a manager so we're, we're spending a lot of time especially if we're on like speed two uh clicking on them picking something for them to do it's a lot of time in menus as opposed to just watching essentially money come in which is what i would rather be doing um but we'll get to tier two pretty quickly and get another manager so we might as well jump to our next day here um we can change our workers hours and stuff like that as well as time goes on but we need different unlocks for that but we want to pretty much stack up new components all the time because we're going to be using these components uh almost as crafting ingredients to build bigger and bigger projects and you'll see that as we get a little further along so you need a network component and an encryption component in 27 hours i'll accept that that's reasonably easy um so we'll go network component and then we need an encryption component. I also wish you could, like, queue up jobs. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do here right off the bat is uh, get another workstation. And we still have some candidates here. Some of them are actually quite good. Let's get uh, Edith. She's all right here. 130 if she's expensive or 114 but a little cheaper. Let's go for the slightly cheaper one. We'll get Steven Wilson. Put him up here. And uh, Steven... I'm just going to teach you how to work on encryption for now. So you could have specialized developers on a low level, but what I've found, at least in, in my limited time with the game so far, is you don't really need to have, like, somebody who only does UI, somebody who only does backend, somebody who only does network database encryption, etc., etc. Maybe if you get much larger, you can have this happen, but at a small size, if you've got two or three developers, it seems completely viable to have them all be jacks of all trades for at least these first five skills. Um, I don't know if that affects their happiness, by the way, to have, like, different... Uh, to, to be working on different things. By the way, our sales executive essentially just manages the contract. So she doesn't do anything else during this time. Um, she's just talking to the clients and being like, oh, okay, I'll tell them. Here's the user story, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, we also get new furniture. So there is a, some of this is functional, but most of it, at least from my experience so far, essentially exists um, for us to make our office look cooler. Sometimes, by the way, there's like a little bit of, I don't know if I describe it as like Z fighting, but, you know, obscuring of elements due to the way the UI works here. It is an early access. Uh, it's important to note. But, uh, like, the thing is, I understand how this works. Like, the things that are closer are less apparent in the layer than the things that are further away. But if we put the coffee machine here, I feel like it should naturally be occluded by this lady's desk instead of just sticking out like this as you can see when oh you know what never mind that's just a ui quirk in the crafting i'm an idiot i mean there's still a little bit of like weirdness there but that is fairly inconsequential in regards to what i was thinking of earlier so we hit tier two now that we've hit tier two um do we have any benefits yet not yet you can get benefits that basically make your employees happier to work there because they will have mood uh that decreases and I think it decreases based on a couple of different things. Like, uh, right now, the, the office sucks. I put down a coffee machine with the hopes that it'll get a little bit better. But it's pretty garbage right now, for being honest. So I'm assuming that affects the mood. But, you know, what? let's throw, like, a little couch in here as well. We are a startup, right? Um, so let's get with the times. Uh, but also, I think just the more they do the work, the more they get... Uh, kind of down about it so we can send them on vacation they take a three-day vacation they come back with 100 percent mood but if we kind of ride the lightning there's a chance they might quit and then we lose all that investment in like the the money that we've put into them here and you can also level them up as time goes on like for example upgrade them from beginner to intermediate and then if they quit you know you've lost all of that investment it's a nice kind of simulation of how things can work in the real world so right now we got two developers we also just got the ability to get a designer and we will need a designer Right now, I'm not really worried. You can get a bigger and bigger office space as you play. I haven't actually encountered it myself, but I've seen it in the screenshots. Um, so I'm not going to worry about cramming them in, like, too close together here. 
I haven't, uh, to be honest with you, I found it relatively easy to make money just by fulfilling contracts. I found it very hard to make money by making big projects, but I'm, I'm going to try to do that nonetheless. So we're going to try to get a, a good designer here. 129, real cheap. Sure, Adam, you know what? Again, I'm not too picky about labor. So Adam, take a seat. Now have you start developing uh, all of these different graphics components because we're going to need them. Okay. So what do we need for this contract again? Encryption and network. And we're almost done. Let's let's turn off our uh, recruitment here. Cancel. We'll, pretty soon we'll get the ability, by the way, to have a manager. And when we have a manager, then for every three employees per manager, they can auto-renew uh, their goal. So we could essentially just have every one of these workers, except for the sales executive, just constantly making one thing. And as long as we check in every once in a while and change it, our life's going to be better. Well, I guess our designer just went home early today. Um, must be nice. Do we seriously? Like, dude, you're taking forever to build this encryption key. He should be done before they get too mad at us. We still got five hours left in it. Yeah, I mean, you're going to finish it before five. What are you just doing? Probably like a, oh, just a GUI to trace their uh, IP address and Visual Basic, right? Four hours left. There we go. So we're going to deliver that. Actually a decent chunk of change for being relatively early here. And we'll have her go for a new contract right now. So now we've got two developers. Um... Have you learn this and start cranking these out. We got two developers. They're working on sort of different stuff. One of them is making databases. One of them is making network components. We got a new contract. We got a graphic designer working on stuff to make it look pretty. What do we need here? 3300 bucks. High urgency. It's going to take us 10 hours. We need a database. We need a blueprint. And we need a back-end component. I'll accept this because we're already almost there. Um, we need a database. The database is just going to be that right there. So hopefully this will let us hit tier three. Because once we hit tier three, um, and we have these like auto, re well, we're close. And we have these, uh, the ability to auto repeat work, the game becomes a lot less monotonous. And I'm just going to, you know, call it like I see it. In the early game, wait, what is the, our other dude building? Network, that's fine. In the early game, it's a little monotonous to be like, okay, the, this contract needs this. Let's a la carte select this and have them make it. It's It comes into its own, I guess, is the way that I would describe it. Um, you should be making blueprints now so we can fulfill this order. Uh, it comes into its own, in my opinion, when you just have developers constantly working on things and then you basically build up a, an inventory of components that you can use. Now, you're, always, you're obviously going to need to change that as different projects come in. Um, you know, Okay, we don't need two of you working on databases. You're slower. You can work on encryption for now. Um, like we, uh, we're going to need to mix things up as time goes on is what I mean to say, based on whatever kind of contracts come in or whatever kind of projects we're working on ourselves. However, um, it's much, much nicer in my opinion when you get a manager, um, so that you don't have to auto renew or you don't have to manually renew all the time. So we've reached tier three. We got a manager. This is where I really think it starts to come into its own. So let's get a... Another beginner's workstation. Get it set up in a nice, like, quadrant style here. We'll recruit a manager. Really, we're just going to take the first person over, like, 110 to begin with. And uh, we still can't deliver this. We need one more blueprint. It's almost done. It's done. We'll deliver. Lots of experience. Look for a new contract. We could have her search for a new contract uh, if we manage her, by the way. But I'd much rather... Like, the contract is a little bit more hands-off. The development it takes forever, so um, let's just see if we can hire someone good right away. Candidates won. 149, uh, you're hired. I don't even need to look at the competition. You gotta lock that down, dude. Um, so we'll put everybody but the sales associate under this manager, and now they will, by default, auto-repeat the work that they're doing, and our life is gonna be like 10 times easier as a result of this. Do we run the risk of possibly... Uh, getting the same thing, like getting a stockpile of too many of the same thing. Yeah, but at least they're working at like 100% efficiency, even if the variety is low. See, and this is what we're looking for is contracts. And once we hit this point, we can start to accelerate very quickly because now we're not making work to order. We already have this work done. Fake Twitter is like, hey, we want these components you've already got. We'll give you 2,400 bucks. Well, of course, deliver now. 
on time and under budget, dude. We do still need to manually search for contracts. So yeah, that's the one thing that like, I wouldn't say annoys me necessarily, but it it is a little bit annoying. Is that uh, in the early game, you do have to micromanage. But it, at the same time, the first time that you go through, I think it sort of makes sense because it does a good job or at least a decent job of tutorializing uh, what you're doing. Uh, so that you're, it doesn't come at you too fast, I suppose. You know, you probably noticed this big old create product button. We're not going to do this until we get a lead developer, which should happen in the next, eh, maybe like five or ten minutes here. So, the other thing is that I think the game actually does, and I'm not a businessman. I'm certainly not a software engineer, despite the fact that I pretend to be one in Isaac episodes. But this teaches you a little bit about opportunity cost as well. Like, I'm looking at this. 54 hours, 1500 bucks. You want me to make graphics components. You want me to make blueprint components. You want me to make wireframes. You want me to make backends. We could do it, but to be honest with you, that's just not that much money. So I'll see you in 30 days, Amazon. I'll see you in 30 days. You probably wouldn't do that in most situations, but I'm gonna do it in this situation because uh, I want to stock up ingredients for when we get our lead engineer because I want our, our lead developer to basically be able to get to work on like a new reddit or something right away and that should happen when we hit tier 4. Uh, unfortunately, in order to hit tier 4, we're gonna need to complete some contracts to get some experience, but I digress. So just make some back ends here. Uh, we're, we're still losing money. We lost $19,000 this month, but I mean we hired a bunch of people, we took out a big loan, and we've only been in business for five days. That doesn't seem that bad. Sure. High urgency, 24 hours, 3600 bucks from fake Alibaba. I'm okay with that. What do you need for this? Two back-end components? All right. When you finish... Nah, I mean, just keep working on databases for now. Unless we need... Ah, you know, we got a lot of databases. You know what? Work on UI elements. We're going to need a lot of those. And then you should probably, the graphic designer should probably start working on graphics here. So at some point we are going to need um, to manage our employees' happiness, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen right away here. That might be something you're going to have to take my word for, I suppose. By the way, not all the work is created equal. Like UI components are much faster to make than encryption modules, for example. Um, but... You, you, you kind of get a feel for that as the game goes on. So I think you, you sort of see what I'm getting at when I say that this is a more um, nuanced approach to a game style than Game Dev Tycoon. And it has uh, positives and negatives. The positive is that uh, it, it certainly seems a lot more strategic. There's a lot more to do. In Game Dev Tycoon, it's like, well, my game is called fart boy and you, it has 16-bit sound you know you're just kind of adjusting sliders and i think game dev tycoon is a good game but i think this scratches that strategy itch a little bit more uh adequately than something like game dev tycoon on the other hand it does have a little bit more of a learning curve not always a bad thing but game dev tycoon was really like i'm gonna call my game fart boy and i'm gonna adjust these sliders and it's out and it got an eight okay sweet i made a lot of money this is a little bit, it has more moving parts. So it does have more of a learning curve associated with it, but I think in, a, in its own way that makes it more satisfying as well. All right, we got another contract. We're gonna do this one because we have the parts already. We're gonna hit the next level. We're not gonna hit the next level. I really wanna hit the next level so we can hire a, a lead designer and start to work on the other aspect, which will probably be the last thing that I cover over the course of this episode, which is building your own product. And then that's another whole system you haven't even seen yet. We already have, it's from Hitbox TV, I guess. We already have our own, um, like, all these components done. So let's accept it, deliver, close it up. We're making money, dude. Like, we're only down 11000 for this month yet, and we still got many, many days to go. So you're, you're seeing the loop here. We got a lot of UI elements. Tell you what, you start to work on some back-end stuff. You're also making back-end stuff. Why don't you work on network stuff now? You're making a lot of graphics. Ah, but we still need graphics. So you know what? Make a couple of those, and then I'll switch you over to blueprints or something. Okay, next contract. We need one more network, and this pays like crazy. So yeah, absolutely, accept contract. By the way, not all these contracts are just accept or decline. Once we get up to a more intermediate level in the game, we actually start the bidding process. So um, you and two other developers will essentially set your price, like the price that you'll do it for, on a slider, uh, and they can undercut you uh, and, and take that bit away from you. Now, I will say, I think that's also a little bit of a, a course abstraction. Um, 
you know, if if you go, hey, this is the project that I want. How much will it cost me to do this? If someone says five thousand, someone says four thousand, and someone says twenty two dollars, are you going to go with the one that says twenty two dollars? In this game, it seems to me that the client always takes the cheapest price. However, um, there's some that I'm like, I would never do it for that amount of money, at least from a business standpoint in this game. And uh, then somebody undercuts me by like 90%. And I'm like, if I were the client, I would be like, uh, sounds too good to be true. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm naive. So someone's working on network. Yeah, that, this, this will be delivered soon. We'll hit the next level. We'll probably be able to finish the episode off by creating some sort of product that will not do very well. But will exist at least. Hopefully. All right, so the network component's done. Ship it. Sick. We leveled up. We can get a lead developer. We can get a whiteboard. We can get some ottomans and bar stools. We're officially a startup in the Bay Area. Um, so we're going to... Now's where things start to get a little bit busier, by the way. Just in case you thought it was this forever. First off, we need a desk. Give me an intermediate workstation. This is our lead developer's time to shine. He's going to work. He doesn't face the same direction as the rest of the proletariat, okay? He's over here. How much money do we have? 23,000? It's not that bad. Let me get like a, a little uh, like Super Smash Brothers area set up over here as well. Make like a little L-shaped uh, couch setup. People are all about this. This is where you have your daily scrums in here. And if, you got, if you're doing a daily scrum, you know you need a whiteboard in that bad boy. Okay, sick. So now we need to open up a, a search for... The lead developer. He won't be affected by our manager, unfortunately. But we can make our manager eventually intermediate. Then he'll be able to manage five employees instead of three. And then we can have him auto-create stuff anyway. So let's start recruiting here. Um, everybody's working on something. Now, I really think this is another step up. A lot of games kind of like lose their luster as they become more complex. I think this is not the case in this game. Um, sure, is, is someone working on wireless? YouTube wants four modules from us to demonetize the video, so... Um, yeah, yeah, someone's working on network, so that's fine. Um, it, it gets more interesting the more complex that it gets here. We're probably rolling too high on graphics, yeah. Um, better? Yeah, I would say better, actually. But more complex is a better way to describe it, uh, for, for certain. So we'll, we'll hold off on hiring our next developer until in-game tomorrow, which is gonna happen any second now. Um, and I think we're ready to deliver, actually, so let's do that. So they don't feel like we're, uh, wasting their time. Okay, we got a lot of applications overnight. 128. R much rather go 124, but cheap. So she's my number one candidate right now. 133, but expensive. 133, but cheap. I'd, I'd take the 133, 5,000 right now. 144, 6,000, but he's, like, he he's ready to leave. You know what? 144, 6,000, 133, 5,000. I'll take the 133, 5,000. Welcome to the party, Clyde. You get a great desk. Welcome. Um, this is where things become slightly more complicated. A beginner lead developer takes the basic components made by our beginner developers or our junior developers and implements them into systems to make things more complex. So we're going to first, I mean, we got the money to spend. We're going to need interface modules because these are kind of a basic component. We're going to need front-end modules, and we're going to need input modules to make what we're going to make. Then, to really demonstrate just what the heck's going on here, we're going to start by creating a product. And this is where I say that this is a... For an early access, like, tycoon game, this game really brings a lot to the table. So this is our product uh, building screen. We can actually come up with frameworks, you know, like Node.js or something like that. Um, but we need a researcher to do that, so that won't be covered in the scope of this video. But let's see, we can make a social media platform, a shopping platform, a streaming service, or a video sharing service. Let's make a video sharing uh, service, we'll call it Snooze2, for example. Um, f the framework, by the way, determines the amount of features you can offer. So we can only offer two features into uh, SnoozeTube right now, with no framework. We get $1.36 per user per month. Nobody uses it on desktop, 92% web, 8% mobile. So we've done our market research there. Um, for me right now, this means I will probably focus on web exclusively because it's going to be resource intensive to develop mobile for uh, mobile functionality for only like 1 in 12 people that actually are going to use it. We'll focus on web. We can add more features into it later. We'll just get launch it with the web platform by itself. 
I don't know if the market changes, by the way, over the course of many months, but we can see like a competitor's list here as well. Um, you can see their market share, and I, I guess we can buy stock in them, or they can buy stock in us. I don't know. Anyway, um, create product. Snooze tube. We're going to make that a video sharing service. And then we're going to make a web landing page. The, these are the only features we have unlocked right now, but researchers can get more. In the future, we'll probably want to make a mobile landing page, but I'm not going to do it yet. 92% web. Let's do it. So in order to complete uh, this and launch it, we need to implement a web landing page. This requires one input module and two front end modules. This is where the lead developer comes in. We need one input module and two front end modules. A front end module requires a UI component and an interface module. An input module requires a UI component and a back end component. So we can actually start by making that, but then we're going to need to do interface and front end two times in order to complete this. In the meantime, we're also going to search for contract work. So if you thought this was really just... Are you missing a... Oh, you, you finished it. That's amazing. Um, if you thought this was an idle game, and I know I said that it had some hallmarks of idle games, but if you thought this was like straight up an idle game, you are... Um, Grossly incorrect, good sir, because this is a game that requires a certain amount of management. Okay, we need encryption, we need graphics, so let's have you working on wireframes. Just pivot, you get the components back anyway, so move to graphics, uh, and we need encryption, so you work on encryption. And what else do we need? Just encryption and graphics. Oh, accidentally moved you around. Um, just encryption and graphics. So yeah, we're going to be good to go there. You're idling again. Just keep making this stuff, because... Uh, we're going to need more interface modules anyway. This dude is jamming out on that keyboard. Do you see that? He's out of control. So we need you to make one of those. You also need to make one more of these. And then we'll be able to launch new YouTube. Snooze tube. And you'll... Uh... And that'll be the end of the video. And this is very much just like a rudimentary example of how to play the game. Um, we haven't even seen... Uh, managing employee health, research, unlocking benefits. In fact, let's let's just unlock some benefits right now. Like, are you are you good to go on the delivery? You are sick. Um, like, if we go to uh, company, we can go to benefits. We now have the small retirement plan for nine hundred bucks a month. Our employees are happier. Basically, is the way that this comes down to because we're investing in their retirement. That probably slows down the degradation of their mood, makes them less likely to leave, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We can do all sorts of, uh, you know. Bay Area startup stuff. We can give them free beverages, sparkling water, LaCroix, cold brew coffee, free gym membership, um, free health care if we really want to go for it, or paid transportation, you know, just pay for their gas so they can get to work, for example. Um, and we can evaluate those things as they kind of come to pass. But for now, we finished our second front end module, so I think we're ready to launch Snooze Tube. Let's implement it. Let's release. We got 5%. It costs us 375 bucks a day to host it. That's crazy talk. Um, we can also upgrade Snooze Tube. It gives us more hype, which generates more users. Uh, and it also gives us just more users to begin with. I think CU is concurrent users anyway. Um, as soon as you launch a product, it's like a whole new Pandora's box is opened up. You know, you can uh, get DevOps people once you get higher up in your tier list. Start to get virtual servers. Cost you a little bit more money, but also they give you a way higher amount of concurrent users that you can also have. See, you might not be concurrent users now that I think about it. My, I, I have no idea what it means, honestly. Um, you can also see we have zero people on it right now. We could fix that with marketing, but we can't do marketing until we get uh, new employees that we can hire to work here that are in the marketing department, which I'm assuming is the marketer which is unlocked at tier six. Not that far away, actually. So um, this can generate hype without actually building anything new. That's the spirit of marketing. Now, there's some irony in me saying that, I suppose. Uh, we want to, before we finish this off, let's just upgrade Snooze Tube and we can watch it grow here. So we want to make four front end modules, two input modules. Input modules require UI and back end, and uh, front end modules require UI and interface, but interface requires blueprint and wireframe. So you, stop making graphics once you finish that one. You're gonna make an interface module, you're not going to make encryption anymore. I'm sorry. I know you're almost done. Well, you can probably finish that one. You've got back end. You change instead because, like, you're not doing anything else. 
So the reason you come up with new features is not only to expand the market, but also it makes people more uh, interested and it makes you more money basically by having those concurrent users. So I'm just gonna do this contract. The thing is, as time goes on, you're probably gonna encounter situations where you're like, I don't wanna do this contract because it's gonna pilfer resources that I wanted to have in order to make my, uh, my product. So sometimes we're gonna be turning down contracts. In fact, right now, if we're gonna focus on building this new product, why don't we tell Essie Ray, whose mood is now in 49% here, um, just go on vacation. Take a three-day vacation. We'll give you a salary. Enjoy yourself. They're also less productive uh, when they're unhappy. Stop making graphics. You need to stop making graphics. Uh, they're less productive when they're unhappy. So we need to essentially keep them happy uh, to keep them productive or sometimes just send them away uh, on vacation and then when they come back it'll be better so we are managing happiness to some extent here so we need a lot of front-end modules front-end modules require um, interface modules which requires UI components so we're gonna need more of those we also needed the blueprints um, which we're building here so we need blueprints and wireframes this means we might want to hire another designer um, which means it's gonna cost us more money which means we might want to start doing more uh, contract work etc etc you can see how it uh, how it grows here. So, wait, 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 do we need two new? We do need two input modules. So, right now we got 32 users on Snooze Tube. It's making us a buck 50 a day. If only that were uh, the actual ratio, uh, I would be living this game instead of playing this game right now. Now, that's pretty sick. We're gonna go for the input module. One of our developers is starting to get unhappy. So, this is where the real, you know, Dark Souls starts to, to abuse the meme. Essentially, uh, now we've got to manage one more thing. One more juggling ball basically gets thrown up in the air here. Uh, but I'm I'm going to stay relatively small. Oh, we do need wireframe and graphics. Gosh darn it. Um, I'm going to stay relatively small. We'll upgrade Snooze Tube slowly. And, and we'll just keep ourselves, you know, scalable. Will be the word that I would like to use. We'll keep ourselves scalable so that we don't uh, ball out of control too hard too fast. We just need to keep switching Mr. Graphics, because he's, uh... He's kind of our linchpin right now. He's our limiting reagent. But do we want to hire another graphic designer? I mean, yes, but, like, also no. Over the course of this episode, at least. He is not even going to come close to finishing two components in the time that it takes us to be ready for it. I think we should also try to make our... Our programmers happier. Like, you know what would make them really happy? Is if we put, like, a little... Nice little bar area in right there. Yeah, that'll do it, right? Probably. Who needs benefits? <laughs> you got a bar stool over there and a little investment in your retirement plan. I don't see what the problem is. So we're just going to keep this guy going. It's going to take us a while here, I'll admit. It's, we, we've mismanaged this to some extent. And she's going to come back soon and then all of our developers are going to be like, I don't want to work anymore because they're all, they want their vacations. They're all going to take them at the same time and life's going to be, you know, our own personal hell. But... That's all right, because we're going to have generated 5% extra hype for Snooze Tube, and that's the only thing that matters. What we actually should do is probably hire one more designer, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, we'll just have our lady search for some contracts here. That's a little sexist. She's not our lady. She's, she's our sales executive. Okay. Snooze Tube generated some revenue. Lots of people getting a little burnt out, you got to admit. Um, we should, if I was doing this not for a video, I would just send them on vacation. What do you want? Backend, UI, oh dude, that's free money. Absolutely delivered, son. Thanks for the cash. You're making front-end modules, love and life. We need three more of these and then we're done. Make some wireframes, please, sir. Um, we're getting close. I promise you this. And honestly, this is it's become kind of like the video's gone over long, if I'm being real with you. Um, what we would normally... Uh, just start making something else. What we would normally do is continue scaling up instead of trying to, you know, get to this new era for our company. Um, no, I'm going to decline this contract because I'm developing a competitor to them. Um, we would... Uh, oh, she's going to leave for sure. We might get an email tomorrow. Not yet, but she's... She's not, you know what, just go on vacation. We would grow with the company is what I'm trying to say. Whereas right now what I'm trying to do is essentially just coast us to the end of the episode here. Um, we need to develop two more greens and then two more pinks and then we're good to go. How you doing? You got wireframes, sick. Make some graphics. We're almost there. 
you should go look for a new contract. She's really happy, which is, I don't know, you know, we're in this new, like, awkward phase as a company. Everybody's sort of like, I don't know, uh, are we going to start being multimillionaires soon or what? We don't know yet. Um, you can take that also for $9,000. Absolutely, you can take those components from me. Now we can get a researcher, free beverages, a water cooler. Everybody's happier. Um, company profile benefits. Dude, free beverages, 570 bucks a month. We're rolling in capital right now because it makes money, stupid. That's my Kevin O'Leary impression. We need one graphics component. I don't want this contract yet. Finish your graphics component. Finish your graphics component. No, I don't want this yet. Finish your graphics. They, they, he finished his graphics component. Finish this. We're almost, dude, snooze tube 54 users. Get ready. That could easily double over the course of the rest of this. Okay, now finally do this. Okay, when he finishes this front end module, we're Gucci here. Developer, go on a vacation. By the way, you're fired. When you come back, I will have replaced you. Snooze tube. Upgrades. Upgrade. So we can now get a web. But oh, we didn't need to make two more of those. We were fine with four. We're going to increase uh, the value of our web landing page. Hypes at 10%. Watch these users pile in, dude. So again, it starts small, is what I'm trying to suggest. But eventually, you know, you could have a suite of products. You could retire them. You could develop new ones. And once you get that researcher going, the researcher develops new frameworks. Frameworks allow you to have more features. Features allow you to launch with 50% hype instead of 10% hype. Maybe you got a chance of, uh, you know, making it in today's cruel and cutthroat Silicon Valley universe. Either way, this has been a 40-minute let's look at of Startup Company, a game that I think is pretty darn good.